Okay, we're going to be looking at specifically the light dependent reactions in the thylakoid. So this is a thylakoid. This is one thylakoid right here. This is going to be an adjacent thylakoid. Here's part of an adjacent thylakoid. And in the previous video, we already saw kind of the big overview, but right now it's kind of the same thing, but we're not going to be looking at the Calvin cycle or the light independent reaction. So let's remind ourselves what's going on here. Uh, chlorophyll is our main photosynthetic pigment here, and it's going to get excited by light energy. And we're going to call this particular first piece of chlorophyll photosystem 2, just because that's the main one. So think of it as PS2. Um, if you're into video games, then you are a big dork. Just kidding. I am too. Not really. <laughs> I use, well, anyways, light energy excites this chlorophyll. This chlorophyll is going to absorb light energy, and remember, the electrons are going to get excited here. So electrons are actually going to be knocked out and are going to move down an electron transport chain, as we saw previously. So here is a flow of electrons down an electron transport chain. And these electrons are going to be accepted in the end. We can just follow this path here. Accepted in the end by something called NADP+. Plus, and that's going to combine with a proton that's hanging around to make NADPH. And you, if you watched the previous video, NADPH is a big, important molecule. It's going to be a hydrogen donator. So we're going to give it a star because this is one of the main products of the light dependent reactions in the thylakoid. So uh, let me just make sure we know what we're looking at here. Since so this is a thylakoid, uh, inside here is the thylakoid space. Thylakoid space. And... Um, Outside here, we are looking at, this is the stroma around here. I'll come back to that in a second. But okay, anyway, so as a result of all of this, uh, electrons get excited. But we're going to run out of electrons eventually, so we need to replace these electrons. And it turns out that water is a good source of electrons and hydrogen and oxygen. But oxygen is kind of a waste product. So uh, here is water right here, and it's going to be split and by an enzyme called the water splitting enzyme. But this process is called photolysis. Um, where water is going to get split, and water is going to get split into oxygen. So, and I've made oxygen kind of a an excrementy color because it's kind of a waste product here. It's good for us, but for plants, it's no good. So it comes off as a as a waste product over here, and we're left with hydrogen, and the hydrogen gets split. There's two hydrogen atoms, so we can split them even further into protons and electrons. And the electrons actually come back here to replace those electrons that got excited and got bumped to uh, elect the electron transport chain. So um, this area in here uh, ends up being filled with more protons. So gradually, these protons are going to build up inside this space here. And another thing that happens is as the movement of these actual electrons actually contributes to adding more protons into the space as well, too. So more protons are bumped into the space. So the flow of electrons it causes protons to be pumped into the space. So this is called uh, chemiosmosis, and we're going to see that again a little bit later. So what else do we need here? So after we have a buildup of protons here, we get a proton gradient where uh, a lot of protons are inside. A lot of protons in, are inside compared to outside, and they're actually going to flow out by um, diffusion through a protein. You can call it a, a, a channel. It's actually an enzyme, so it's going to flow out through something called ATP synthase, and the flowing of the protons heading out, so these protons moving out, is going to allow for the production of ATP. So ADP plus another P I've left out here gets converted to ATP. So it gets a star because it's also one of the main products of this entire thing here. So this is called chemiosmosis. We say the coupling of electron transport to ATP production. This area out here is the stroma. Chemiosmosis, this production of ATP by the diffusion of protons is all is just like the same process that's in uh, cellular respiration. So this also happens in the mitochondria as well too. Um, Anything else? We have to label this. This is the chain of electron carriers. Can I just put that here as chain of electron carriers? Make that stand out a little bit. This thing is called the thylakoid. We know that already. The thylakoid. This specifically, we're looking at the thylakoid membrane. So the thylakoid space gets filled up with all the protons here. And one more final thing that we've kind of skipped out, but this is going to be important in the next video, is that there's another place that light can be absorbed, and it's through another uh, kind of chlorophyll unit called photosystem 1 or PS1 
it's the older model photosystem one uh, this can also absorb light directly and these pro these electrons can be bumped over here but there's something special that happens here with photosystem one we're going to see that next uh, where the electrons actually don't move in a straight line this is a linear fashion right from one place all the way to the end to get accepted and that's it but in photosystem one these electrons can actually kind of move in a in a chain or in a cycle and it moves around here um, so it's not to confuse I'm gonna leave that out for now but you're gonna see this in the next video so PS1 is kind of important so in summary in summary what are we looking at here light energy is being used to excite electrons the movement of these electrons is helping to create a proton gradient so we're moving protons in here and this proton gradient is used to generate ATP the movement of the electrons is being used to generate something called NADPH both of these are going to be key players in the light independent reactions which involve converting carbon dioxide to glucose so in other words we need these main final products in order to be able to do uh, the next process which is called the Calvin cycle um, anything else down here let's see uh, you can say that uh, the chlorophyll is photoactivated. That's another fancy word for that. And I did mention this is a straight line chain movement of electrons here. So here we call this, <coughs> excuse me, non cyclic photophosphorylation. Let's just go over that term really quickly. Non cyclic means the electrons are moving in a straight line, well, in a linear fashion, so not in a cycle. That means there's obviously one called cyclic photophosphorylation. That's coming up in the next video. So non-cyclic photophosphorylation means the electrons are moving in a non-cycle form from point A to point B. Photo, meaning in the presence of light. Phosphorylation is literally referring to this adding a phosphate to ADP because that's two phosphates adenosine diphosphate adding a phosphate to make ATP adenosine triphosphate so it's about <coughs> the production of ATP all right I gotta get a drink of water the production of ATP using the energy from an excited electron from photosystem 2 is called non-cyclic photophosphorylation in the next video we're gonna see this exact same diagram unchanged but we're just gonna mention what cyclic photophosphorylation is. Sorry for coughing.